Objection. Mr. President. Senator from Pennsylvania. Mr. President, reserving the right to object, I have long advocated for profound reforms at the Exim Bank. My preference has long been that a U.S. administration, in fact, this was an obligation of the previous administration, which it chose to ignore, but that the U.S. administration negotiate among our trading partners a mutual phase-out of these taxpayer subsidies uh, export entities. My objection to this is the embedded taxpayer subsidy, the embedded taxpayer risk in every transaction that the Exim does. And the special interest that I'm here defending today is the American taxpayer. Now, I'm pretty sure I'm not going to change anyone's mind on the floor tonight. So let me just make clear about where we are with these nominees. During the banking committee hearings, I and other colleagues made it clear I would support the nominees to fill the vacancies on the board, provided that a reformer such as Scott Garrett was included among them. I would have supported restoring the quorum with the confidence that there would have been at least a good faith effort to begin the kind of reforms that we need. Unfortunately, the committee chose not to advance Scott Garrett, who would have done, I think, a very good job bridging the gap between the opponents and the proponents of Exim Bank. But that was not to be. So in, instead, Exim supporters are now asking to confirm the remaining nominees, but not including Scott Garrett, who has taken himself out of the running at this point, but nor would it include any other person as president. So what would the consequences be if this unanimous consent approval were to be agreed to? The Exim Bank would reconstitute a quorum, would resume doing multi-million and multi-billion dollar deals, all of which put the taxpayers further at risk, and there would be no prospect of any meaningful reform. So I will reiterate, I remain open to finding a new candidate who can lead the Exim and implement the kind of reforms that are needed, but that is not what is on the table at the moment, and until that time comes, I cannot support confirmation of these additional board members, which would reconstitute the quorum Therefore, I object. Mr. President. Objection is heard. Mr. President. Mr. President. Mr. The Mr. Senator from Ohio has the floor. Yeah, I, thank you. I, I'm disappointed we're unable to confirm the XM nominees today. I know there are many other senators who want to resolve this situation. I'll continue to push to reopen the bank. We were willing, we were willing, a majority of the Senate, a majority of the Banking Committee was willing to flip, to put Mr. Garrett as one of the members, one of the four members, and make Mr. Bacchus another uh, former House member, uh, qualified and as a supporter of the Exim Bank, make him chairman. We were willing to have Scott Garrett on this board, but not as chairman because the chairman sets the agenda. And Mr. Garrett would not, Senator Heitkamp asked him tough questions, would not commit to the committee that he wasn't out to destroy the bank and undermine the bank. So we are willing to make, put Mr. Garrett there, just not in the chairman's position. And it's clear that Mr. Garrett, on behalf of the vice president, and a small number of members of this body want to undermine and destroy the Exim Bank. There's no question about that. Mr. President. Senator from Pennsylvania. Mr. President, I, I'd like to point out that uh, included in the list of nominees that uh, my colleague from Ohio asked for unanimous consent for confirmation of, included among them would be an inspector general for the Export-Import Bank. And that is a different function. That is a function that I supported in committee and I would support today. And as far as I am aware, there's no objection whatsoever on this side of the aisle, no objection to confirming the inspector general to this post. Therefore, I ask unanimous consent that the Senate proceed to the consideration of executive calendar number 585, that the Senate vote on the nomination with no intervening action or debate, that if confirmed, the motion to reconsider be considered made and laid upon the table, the President be immediately notified of the Senate action, and that no further motions be in order, and that any statements relating to the nomination is, be printed in the record. Is there objection? Mr. President, I reserve the right the to Senator object. Senator from Ohio. Mr. President, how does it make sense to confirm an inspector general for an agency that really isn't a f an agency that is actually in operation doing its best. So we're going to not appoint the members of the board, so they will have zero board members. They won't be able to conduct nearly the quality or quantity of business that they used to and that they could if we had no objection to the motion earlier. And then we're going to have an inspector general to watch over them. That simply doesn't make sense. I object. Objection is heard.
Mr. President, 